Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hey, welcome back to another Filling Station service. I'm your host, Pastor Matthew, and I'm super excited as we start on another lesson of our Good Life series. Today, we're learning about how God can restore things, how he can make them new, make them beautiful again, um, and how he restored the walls around Jerusalem using Nehemiah and how he can restore our lives. So here to get us started with today's lesson is Mindy the Mouse to tell you what's up. Hey, hey kids, Mindy the Mouse here from the Game Mouse Trapper to tell you what's up. Today we have a really exciting Bible story that has to do with the Israelites and what happened to them while they were living as exiles in the land of Babylon. You see, after they had many evil kings and stuff, um, the Babylonian Empire had taken over the Israelites and they lived in their land um, as foreigners. And what happened was is there was a, an Israelite named Nehemiah who worked for the king of Babylon. And he noticed that the city of Jerusalem, that the walls had been completely torn down and his people were living in shambles. This made him really sad. So Nehemiah, he asked the king if he could go back and rebuild the walls around his city. And sure enough, the king let Nehemiah go. And God used Nehemiah to restore the city of Jerusalem so that the people could live in peace and serve God once again. This is an amazing story and it shows us how God can restore the things in our lives. So anytime, and I mean anytime, someone asks you what's up, you tell them, God restores. Stand up and say it with me. One, two, three. God restores. All right, Mindy the Mouse here. I'll see you next time. All right, who can tell me what's up? That's right. God restores. What does it mean for God to restore something? It's it's like he makes it new again. He makes it beautiful once again. You see, sometimes in our lives, we have a lot of different things that happen. And today we're learning about how in the story of Nehemiah, the city of Jerusalem was in shambles. The walls were torn down. They were open to attacks from the enemy. And it was a really bad place to be. You see, sometimes our lives can feel this way too. You see, we have a lot of different things that can happen to us. See, sometimes they're going to be good things. This green cloth can represent good things that happen in our lives. And uh, you can still see that, that green here. Here, let me use my pen to, to shove this cloth all the way in. Um, sometimes those are good things that happen to us. But then sometimes in our lives we have some things that are not too bad, but, but they're not great. And so we have those things happen and, and, uh, and that yellow cloth represents things that, that, you know what, we can, we can handle it, but it's not the best. But then sometimes we have really bad things happen. And that's represented by this red cloth here. And you see when bad things happen to us, it can make us feel like our life is left in shambles, just like the walls around Jerusalem. It was not a good thing, but the Bible says that when we turn towards God, that God has the ability to restore us and to make us into something beautiful, something amazing. And what can happen is, is that God can restore us and make us a new creation in him once again. It's a pretty amazing thing what God can do in our lives if we trust him and follow after him. Let's open up this service with a quick word of prayer. God, I ask that you would help each of us to look at our lives today. Is there anywhere where our walls are torn down and we're in shambles and we're vulnerable to listen to the attacks of the enemy that the enemy wants us to feel lonely, wants us to feel worthless. But God, we know that when we turn to you, that you can restore us, you can make us new, and that you can use us to help others know about you so that they can be restored as well. Thank you for all that you do for us and help us have a wonderful service in your holy name. Amen. All right, well, check out this memory verse song. We've been learning it for a few weeks now, so sing it if you know it. Oh, get ready. We can make our own plans with the Lord. These are right answers. We can make our own plans with the Lord. These are right answers. We can make our own plans with the Lord. These are right answers. We can make our own plans with the Lord. These are right answers. Sing it with me. We can make our own plans with the Lord. Is the right answers? We can make our own plans with the Lord. Is the right answers? We can make our own plans with the Lord. Is the right answers? We can make our own plans with the Lord. Is the right answers? Proverbs 61. 
All right, let's say that verse one more time together. It says, we can make our own plans, but the Lord gives the right answers. Proverbs 16, 1. You see, we're talking today about how God can restore us. And we can come up with our own plans to try to fix the problems or the mistakes in our lives. But at the end of the day, the Bible says that the Lord gives the right answers. See, what we need to do when we make mistakes, when we have things that have gone wrong in our lives, um, whether they were caused by us or caused by others, whatever it may be, when we have those things happen in our lives, we need to learn that we can turn to God and that he will give us the right answers. Let's think about that as we go into this time of praise and worship today. Hello, it's me, Choreography Chloe, and I need you to stand up for today's worship warm-ups. Now, we're gonna start with our hands in the air and we're gonna wave them like we just don't care. Now we're gonna touch our toes all the way down. And now we're gonna do five jumping jacks. One, two, three, four, five. All right, you're ready to worship Jesus today.
Who can tell me what's up? That's right, God restores. Today we're learning about how God restores, and we'll be looking at the story of Nehemiah. And he has a whole book of the Bible dedicated just to him, and it's 13 chapters long. And at this time in the Israelites' history, uh, the Jews, who were also known as the Israelites, were taken over and living as foreigners in the land of Babylon until Babylon was captured by the Persian kingdom. You see, most of these Jews were still living in exile in the Persian kingdom, and there was one Jew named Nehemiah who was the cupbearer to the king. This means that he would test all the king's drinks to make sure that they tasted good and that there was nothing wrong with them. Like if someone went, tried to poison the king, Nehemiah was that guy who would test that before it went to the king. It was actually kind of a high position to have because um, it was so important to protect the king. Well, one day some Jews had visited um, Nehemiah and they were living in Jerusalem and Nehemiah asked what was it like in their homeland of Jerusalem what was it like and they began to tell Nehemiah that their city was in ruins that the walls were all torn down that people were basically living in shambles and this saddened Nehemiah he realized that when the city was in ruins it was unprotected and it was vulnerable to attacks that when things aren't looking good on the outside that enemies can attack and uh, Nehemiah knew that this wasn't good for his people. So he began to pray and ask God to help him to restore it. Here's what it says in Nehemiah chapter one, verse five. He said, O Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of unfailing love with those who love him and obey his commands. Listen to my prayer. Look down and see me praying night and day for your people, Israel. I confess that we have sinned against you. Yes, even my own family and I have sinned. We have sinned terribly by not obeying the commands of Moses and Please remember what you told your servant Moses. If you are unfaithful to me, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands and live by them, then even if you are exiled to the ends of the earth, I will bring you back to the place I have chosen for my name to be honored. Basically, when Nehemiah was praying this, he was saying, God, will you help show favor with the king so that he will allow me to go back and restore the wall? He told God, God, I know that we've messed up. I know that we've sinned. I know that we made mistakes. And that's the reason that our lives are in shambles. But he basically said, God, if you'll give me a chance, would you help me to restore the city? And God can do the same thing in us. So Nehemiah had prayed and he went to the next day to the king, to his, his normal duties, and the king saw that he was sad. So he asked Nehemiah what was wrong because he had never seen him like this before. And here are the steps that Nehemiah took to restore the wall. Nehemiah had asked the king for permission to go home and rebuild the wall. Now this was probably a scary thing because uh, the king probably could have had him killed for that, but instead the king showed favor upon him because God's hand was in this whole thing and the king allowed Nehemiah to go back. So he went back and he began to look around. He examined the work that needed done. And then he began to gather the people to begin the work. As they were building, there were other people that would pass by and they would make fun of Nehemiah and all the Jews because they were trying to rebuild this wall around the city. They said, you'll never get that task done. It's impossible. They were enemies to the Israelites. But as they were building, Nehemiah ignored them and he kept working. He wasn't going to let the people that made fun of him stop him. And once they made lots of progress, the same men who were making fun of them, they actually began to threaten Nehemiah to attack him. So do you know what Nehemiah did? Do you think that he stopped there and he was like, nope, I'm done. I'm not going to build the wall. People are going to attack us. No, instead he ignored them. He placed guards around them and they continued to build the wall. And guess what? Do you think it'd take a long time to build a wall around the city? Especially since they didn't have equipment like we have today with big bobcats and tractors and stuff. They didn't have any of that stuff to help them build the wall. And in 52 days, Nehemiah and the, the rest of the Jews had come together and they completed the wall around the city. That was all because God helped them to restore their city that was broken and needed healed. It's because they turned back to God that God showed them favor and allowed this to happen. Did you know that God has the power to do the same thing in our lives today? That there's days that we can feel broken down and like, like we're living in shambles, like everything's going wrong. 
You see, when I was younger, I used to be really, really close to my two brothers. They were like my best friends when we were growing up. We did absolutely everything together and life was great. I never had to worry about finding friends because I had my brothers there all the time with me. But as my brothers got older, they were both older than me. Um, they did nothing wrong, but they got married and they moved out. And so when that happened, we slowly began to grow apart um, and it, it, it did nothing wrong. But since I was the only one left living at home um, with my parents, I began to feel really lonely because it was like my two best friends were gone. In fact, I was so lonely that I began to think that nobody loved me and I was really, really sad and I needed God to restore me. You see, it was almost like how the Jews were living in shambles. Their walls were completely broken down. Everything that I had that made me feel comfortable, I, I didn't have that same kind of friendship with my brothers. Um, we still got together and hung out, but it wasn't as often because they had their wives and they were working. And, and so I just felt really lonely. So I began to pray and I asked God to help me to find happiness and to give me some new friends. And that year I ended up meeting a new friend and him and I have been best friends for over seven years. In fact, I just hung out with him a couple times in the last two weeks. Um, that's how close that we are. We've been best friends and we consider each other brothers at this point. And God saw my need at that time and he helped me. And it was because I turned to him. You see, maybe you're in a place in your life like Jerusalem, where your walls are down and you're vulnerable to attacks. You see, the enemy wants us to feel lonely. He wants us to feel like we're no good and like we've made too many mistakes and we've messed up too many times. And when we aren't listening to God's voice and we listen to those voices, it feels like our lives are in shambles, just like the walls of Jerusalem. But when we begin to turn back to God, just as Nehemiah prayed, that when people turn back to God, God will hear their cries and he'll answer their prayers. You see, if you're in a place today where maybe you've had sin or loneliness or you just need God to do something new in you, you need to be restored, to be made new in him, to have happiness found in him. If you're in that place today, God wants to help to restore you. And maybe you're in a place where you know someone who is living that way and they need restoration from God. God used Nehemiah to restore the walls around Jerusalem and rebuild that city and make it into something new again. Maybe God wants you to reach out to a friend who is sad or lonely or needs help. And God wants to use you to help restore them. You see, whichever it might be, maybe you're struggling yourself and you need God to restore you and do something in you. Or maybe you feel like God is giving you a burden to go and help restore someone else to be part of their restoration process and point them towards God who can help them in their times of need. Whatever it might be, as we go into this time of worship today, I want you to begin to pray and ask God, God, will you restore me? Will you help me with whatever that may be? For me, I prayed and asked God to give me some new friends, to, to help me build new friendships and to help me find my happiness in him. And he answered that prayer. Maybe for you, it's that you need God to help you to, to focus in school or you need him to help with fighting that's going on at home. Whatever it might be, begin to ask God to, to help restore you. And if it's someone in your life that you know that, that you know they're struggling, ask God to use you to help them find restoration in him. Let's sing this song together and worship him today. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the day. Father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. 
Father, I thank you that you are a good, good father to us. God, that you restore us in our times of need, that you help us to to trust you and turn back to you. And just like Jerusalem was made new once again, God, that you can make us new and that we can always turn to you and trust in you. We thank you for that in your holy name. Amen. Wow, what an amazing service we've had today. Thank you, boys and girls, for tuning in and listening as we've talked about God's word and how God can restore us. Thanks for watching.